Hi, I'm Christy Turner. I'm back with fitness assessment and testing. And we're going to cover specifically body composition testing, starting with the seven site skin caliper test. After you've taken all of your measurements, if you choose, there is an equation where you can implement, you can use the sum of your seven skin fold sites, or you can use the tables that are in your book. Tables can make it a lot easier, but if you're curious about the equation, it is in your book or on this presentation. In the equation, you also will look at the age. So when using the tables, you need to know your client's age as well as the sum of their skin folds. The first site that you would measure from is the subscapular. As the name implies, it is below the scapula. The, it is a diagonal pinch. It is a diagonal pinch. <laughs> And it is one to two centimeters below the inferior angle of the scapula. So superior would be the top part of your scapula, inferior below. And you take a diagonal pinch, diagonal off of the midline. And the one to two centimeters is based on the size of the person, essentially. Now, to help this spot pop out, it helps to take the person's right arm I know this is my left, and tuck it behind to help you find your spot. When you get the part where you need to pinch, have them release their arm down to the side to help the skin be easier to pinch. The second spot is the tricep. This is a vertical pinch, up and down, parallel to the midline. You're on the back side of the middle of the upper arm, and you're going to measure halfway between the acromion process and the olecron process. So halfway between the shoulder and the elbow is the point where you'll pinch directly in the middle of the tricep, pinching over with the left hand, measuring so you can read with the right. The chest pectoralis, this varies different between men and women, so I will do the men's first. You're going to do one half the distance between the axillary line, the anterior axillary line, and the nipple. The difference between the women is you're talking about a third of the distance on, the, on a woman. So the mid axillary line here and the nipple halfway between is where you will do your pinch. A third of the distance, so where this is halfway, you would do it a third of the distance in so you're you're more close to the shoulder the armpit area to start measuring your third this again is a diagonal pinch now the mid axillary line or mid axillary measurement is taken off the side near the ribs so you'll need their arm out of the out of the way a good way to do it is tucking it behind like you did for the subscapular measurement this is a vertical pinch, and right underneath the armpit and a little bit below, in between the xiphoid process, which you remember from CPR is kind of that dent where the intercostals come together at the sternum, right between xiphoid process around in the middle of the body, along the midline of the body. Now the superiliac is above the iliac crest of the pelvis. So you will have, have your client find the hip, their hip bone that's poking out of their side. It can be hard to find on some bodies, but once you find that, you want to do it in line with the iliac crest. This is a diagonal pinch taken down this way, off the top, so superior to the iliac crest, you'll take your measurement off the top at an angle pointing down. The abdomen, this is a vertical pinch, two centimeters to the right of the navel. That one's not very hard. Now the thigh, the most painful in my opinion, of pinches is a vertical pinch and to get the skin loose you want to have your person 
take all of their weight off of that leg, kind of the heels popped up a little bit so that the flesh is softer to give you an area where you can pinch. And you want to, you want to measure halfway between the patella and your crease, the inguinal crease. So you'll find that spot, take your pinch, and read just below your pinch. Now, to review a three-site skin fold test, men take three measurements. The only one that is the same is the thigh. So with men, you will take the chest or pectoral measurement, the abdominal measurement, which is right off the belly button, and the thigh. With women, you will take the triceps measurement, the superiliac, right off the hip bone, and the thigh. Now to review what BMI is, a lot of us have heard about that body mass index is what BMI stands for. The formula is the body, body weight in kilograms divided by the height in meters squared. We don't, if you don't have that information and you don't know the conversions, you can always do use a different formula or if you choose to convert pounds to kilograms or inches to meters, you can do that as well or we have the weight in pounds times 703 divided by the height in inches squared. And based on what that number is, or whatever that number is, is their BMI. And it's not gender specific on the categories, but based on whatever that number is, categories them if, whether they are in a healthy weight or an obese category. The waist to hip ratio is a measurement of the waist to the hips. This, um, this ratio is necessary or has become popular because it is a good indicator of subcutaneous abdominal fat. And that has been proven to be a very dangerous area to store your fat in because not only is that not is only is it stored right on the organs, it begins to be stored within the organs themselves. So a lot of people could have kind of that barrel chest where it may be hard, but and may not be soft and squishy on top, but underneath just that measurement, and as it relates to your hips, that's a, that's a sign that your body is more prone to store its fat abdominally than in the hip. So to take this, you would take a measurement one inch above the navel for the waist. And the measurement is around the buttocks above the gluteal fold. The easiest way is pretty much the largest area of the hip. You take the waist circumference and you divide it by the hip circumference. And in men, a number that is greater than one or in women that is greater than 0.85, you are considered to be high risk. And the table, you can look at the table for more specific numbers. And finally, circumference measurements. Circumference measurements don't exactly have um, a direct correlation, but they can be a good indicator for a client to show progress in size. And there are several different sites where you can take the measurement from, but there are different circumference sites depending on age and gender that can be more informative than others. So typically you want to read, you want to measure them in centimeters and you want to adjust the tape so that it is tight but not digging into the skin and you want to take multiple measurements at each site. And also in your book is a table with a better explanation of the exact areas in which you can measure these, these sites. And I am done with chapter five. Thank you very much.